Today, we're reading about Thunderdome politics, an uncivil war taking back our democracy in an age of Trumpian disinformation and Thunderdome politics by Greg Sargent, the Washington Post columnist. This is from uh, his chapter on voter suppression. It's page 37. Republicans and Democrats inhabit different political realities, as mentioned in a previous chapter. But there are certain facts about our politics that are just objectively true. One of them is this. Generally speaking, efforts to make it harder to vote are almost always pushed by Republicans. You cannot understand what is happening in American politics right now without recognizing this stark and very fundamental difference between the two major political parties. During this decade, procedural hurdles were put into place in around 20 states that in some manner or other have made it harder to vote or to register to vote or have undone previous efforts to make voting or registering easier or have otherwise threatened serious disenfranchisement. Most of them were the creation of Republican lawmakers and officials. The difference in the two parties' national platforms for 2016 tells the story. The GOP platform champions additional hurdles that are absurdly disproportionate to the phantom abuse it alleges, while the Democratic platform cha champions multiple specific ways to make it easier to vote, not harder. The most common and controversial of methods used by Republicans to suppress Democratic turnout is the requirement that would-be voters present identification at the polls. The game here tends to turn on requiring forms of ID that some groups are less likely to have, making participation harder for them. Other restrictions include techniques like cutting back on early voting and making it harder to register, both of which have, in recent years, been instituted in multiple states. Republicans who have passed laws making it harder to vote have tended to claim such measures are necessary to protect against, quote, voter fraud. We'll look at this in more detail below, but for now, notes that note that most of the states that have passed such measures did so while under Republican control. As New York University political scientist Samuel Isikoff has memorably put it, the single predictor necessary to determine whether a state will impose voter access restrictions is whether Republicans control the ballot access process. Scholars trace the modern era of warfare over election rules to the intensely contested presidential election of 2000 in which a divided Supreme Court halted the recount in Florida, throwing the presidency to George W. Bush. The closeness and partisan acrimony of that contest, combined with the intense national focus on election rules that accompany the court battle over it, helped persuade both parties to invest much more attention and energy on those rules. As a result, both the implementation of measures rest restricting the ballot and the legal battles over them have intensified in recent years. A brief glance at the surprising history of voter ID laws begins to tell the story of this tightening. In the 1970s, several states implemented voter ID measures, but all of them provided for ways that voters without the proper ID could cast a ballot. By 2000, there were 14 such laws, and they had been implemented by politicians in both parties. But by the mid-2000s, amid rising post-2000 acrimony, a handful of red states began implementing voter ID laws that the nonpartisan National Con Conference of State Legislatures described as, quote, strict, meaning that they make it easy to disqualify those who don't pass muster. After one of those laws in Indiana was challenged and then upheld in 2008 by the Supreme Court, an escalation began that gained momentum in the Obama era. From 2010 onward, the adoption of voter ID laws in general and of strict ones in particular accelerated. Though a handful were blocked in the courts, as of this writing, a total of 34 states have voter ID laws in effect, 24 that are deemed non-strict and 10 that are deemed strict. The strict ones are in red states or in swing states where they were implemented by Republicans. The story is very similar if you evaluate the state's voting rules in a broader way by including not just voter ID measures, but also cutbacks to early voting and restrictions on registration. Here the trend is just as pronounced. After the 2010 elections, the Brennan Center for Justice documented a sharp rise in efforts to pass such measures in the state legislatures across the country. Not all these efforts bore fruit, but many did. By the time voting took place in Election Day 2016, some 14 states had these new restrictions in place for the first time in a presidential election. Now, as of this writing by the Brennan Center's count, some 20 states have successfully implemented either strict voting ID requirements or cutbacks to early voting, or restrictions on registration, or other me measures with meaningful disenfranchising effects. If you're a liberal who's frustrated by the seemingly unbreakable Republican dominance of not national politics, not to mention GOP control of most state governments across the country, then the chances are that these restrictions figure heavily into your explanation of this GOP supremacy.
Indeed, social media has been absolutely saturated in recent years. The variations of the lament that Republican political dominance is largely maintained through a combination of nefarious and undemocratic tactics, such as ballot restrictions that keep constituencies unfriendly to the GOP from voting, and extreme gerrymanders that have, in effect, built a fortress around the GOP's majority in the House of Representatives. Democrats frequently invoke the, the GOP's use of these tactics, often justifiably, to raise money and to galvanize turnout. This narrative contains some important truths. Some of the forms that these restrictions on voting access have taken in recent years are diabolically obvious in their uh, efforts to keep constituencies supportive of Democrats from voting. Still others boast the distinction of being more insidiously designed and thus less obvious in their intentions. The book is An Uncivil War by Greg Sargent of The Washington Post.